to be back. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm actually filming this at night time, if you can't tell from the darkness. I've been meaning to film all day and it's getting darker and darker now. It's only seven, but it's pretty much night time. I really wanted to get this filmed because next week I'm going on holiday and I know I'm gonna want to do a ton of filming when I'm away. Probably make a video because I feel like it's gonna be really magical. I'm going back to Glastonbury to celebrate my partner's birthday. Tonight I'm just gonna be talking a little bit about what I did for my birthday, showing you how I customize some clothing and that's pretty much it. But I thought it would be a cute little fun, relaxing time for you guys if I shared this with you. So thank you once again for watching and let's jump into it. I was a little bit stuck on what to wear for my birthday this year and even though I've got some really beautiful clothes, I wanted something that I'd never worn before. Um, I was scrolling through my sales and I saw one of the dresses I'd put up there a few months ago. It hadn't really got any interest and I only had it listed for about £35. I'd bought it in Greenwich and what sold it to me were these gorgeous puffy sleeves. They just look like 18th century madness. But the dress itself, as in the body, was a little bit plain and I ended up putting it up for sale because it just didn't fit me properly. Unfortunately, before I started messing around with it, I forgot to film what it looked like on my body. The material didn't have very much give and wasn't super flattering. Here is a photo of it to kind of show you the shape. Um, what it did have though was this really beautiful panelling. It was kind of split into four sections and had been sewn and sort of fitted. So I saw this dress, decided to delete it off my sales because I wanted to cut it up and have fun with it. I was also looking for an excuse to use my handheld sewing machine I had found in a charity shop about a month beforehand. It's this guy and I don't know how old it is, Stitch Mate, but to me it looks like it could be from the 80s or something like that. It seemed simple enough to use and it definitely did the job. You kind of click this button and it's operated with batteries. It was a pretty fun experiment to be honest. I've always been into editing clothing finding stuff in charity shops and thinking of ways to make them more my style with either hand sewing or just cutting things off, rearranging stuff. In fact, I'm wearing something that I edited. This was also a dress. I'll show you what it looked like here again. Um, I found it for £3 and it also didn't fit me very well. I liked the style of it, it was really cosy, but it just looked like I was wearing an enormous sock. So I decided to make it into a jumper. This is what the jumper looks like. I am obsessed with these sleeves, I think they're so fun. They were the bottom half of the dress and I cut them up, stitched them into tubes and then sewed them underneath the sleeve that was already in the dress. Um, it was pretty easy and uh, it took a while but I think it's absolutely adorable. This I made using just acrylic yarn and a big embroidery needle and because it's essentially all holes as knitwear generally is, I just kind of went in and out of the holes and it was pretty easy to put together. Though it did take a little bit of time and there's a few sort of damages here and there. I obviously wouldn't sell this but I've got a lot of pieces that I want to edit and do fun stuff with and then post them on my sales. I think upcycling clothing is a really fun way of making a piece really unique and not having this kind of continuous cycle of waste, I guess. Anyway, I'm gonna show you a little bit of how I pieced this decorative over layer together from a dress, show you a few photos of me in it and then tell you about what I actually did that day. So here I am laying out the dress, measuring it so I know where to cut it. I wanted to make sure I got enough of a hemline to sew all the panels that I wanted to sew and not have it look raggedy and scraggly. I initially wanted to make this a sort of four panelled 
overlay jackety thing which is why there are two side ribbony strips as well i wanted to try and keep the zip on it because i thought it would be too much effort to cut it off and sew around it which is what i actually ended up doing um, using the sewing machine actually wasn't that hard it was more difficult to keep straight because you're kind of holding it in your hand and not working on a flat table here I am cutting off the zip because it just ended up annoying me. <laughs> um, the theme I sort of wanted to go for with uh, this jacket was to kind of create a whole outfit centered around it. I feel like I did that really well in the end and because of the day I had planned, I wanted to have a kind of religious Pope themed outfit, those kind of religious garments that they wear and uh, I absolutely loved the finished product. I got to keep these amazing sleeves, have this strange thing. I might embroider stuff on it one day that would look really cool. And here is the finished piece. I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely adore how it came out and I think it's one of my most favourite things I've ever worn. So regarding what I wanted to do for my birthday, I was pretty stumped initially. I knew that the week after my birthday was my last week of work. I had booked time away with my partner as a kind of birthday treat, so I didn't really feel the need for anything massive. As my mum and I were talking on the phone one night, she suggested going to Canterbury and I just jumped at the idea. Essentially a city because there's a massive cathedral but it's very old, there's lots of beautiful buildings, and I had never been inside the cathedral. As you can probably tell from half of my neck, I'm pretty obsessed with cathedrals and gothic architecture in general. So I just had a cute little day out with my partner and my mum, basically. My mum picked us up and drove us there, we had breakfast wandered around for a bit. I didn't film as much as I wanted to. I got some pretty good stuff from inside the cathedral because I feel like that was the kind of main event anyway. And we ended up meeting up with someone who works there. So we got the kind of inside scoop. Um, a friend of my mum's that she'd never actually met in real life and it just turns out he worked at Canterbury Cathedral as a stained glass artist maybe restorer person which is a massively cool job i apologize if the clips are a little bit choppy it wasn't exactly like a seamless filming day vlogging wise we went to my grandmother's place for dinner that evening because she lives about 25 minutes away from canterbury her flat is very full of stuff funny that I feel like I very much got the collector's gene from my grandmother, like no one else in our family is really like that, as in enjoys buying and collecting and displaying things everywhere. I very much relate to her space, but I hope that when I'm 90 years old I'll own a lot less than her. I did however want to film a little bit inside her apartment for you because it's just fun. Maybe I'll have to do a whole separate video of an apartment tour of my grandma's place because I feel like I could make a whole video out of it. Either way I didn't end up filming at my grandma's, I think we were just shattered and it was an overload of excitement seeing her opening presents, that kind of stuff. It was just family time so I didn't really crack out the camera that much in the evening. I'm going to share with you a few visuals from my day. I hope that you enjoy. I hope that you can soak in some of the beauty and the inspiration of the buildings that I saw, the light, everything was just beautiful. Hello everybody, so here I am in Canterbury and I'm about to have vegan pancake breakfast with my partner and my mum in this cute little cafe. My first view of the beautiful cathedral. This space is full of really old buildings. There's a really lovely one coming up just here. <gasps> Look at this! So we just got a little coffee from here and I saw this cute little doodle of a cat. And 
and I wanted to share it with you guys. There's a busker over there. There's lots of doggos around. <gasps> stunning, stunning gates. Hello. Tiny, tiny doggo. <laughs> My partner just apologising for being a weirdo about dogs, but we're all weirdos about dogs, aren't we? Lovely. That's a sweet shop. I feel like it used to be a vintage sweet shop. But I mean, all these buildings are just incredible really. I think that's the entrance to the cathedral, which we will film later on. Which way should we go, Bee? Aww. I'm gonna give the busker some money. Okay, go on then. Dying over this puppy. That looks like a puppy as well, but it's just a fuzzy purse. <laughs> mm. Boring. There's a lot of sooty things here. But look at that. I love all the wood, like all the natural all exposed. The wood. God, I love wood. And all the dogs. I love all the dogs. <laughs> <kind of> wood. <laughs> Don't be silly and perverse in front of dogs. <laughs> Really know where we're going. Actually, no, I do know where we're going. There's a health food shop up here. We're on this way. Uh, why not? Did that? Okay. I mean, it just reminds me of Foy. Just reminds you of Foy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got so Foy vibes, doesn't it? It's because of the cobblestones. Had to film this place because there's a gramophone, and yes, a very grumpy-looking lady next to the gramophone. Can't see her. There she is. So grumpy. That's good looking tiramisu. It's so good. It's falling over. Yeah. Can't handle itself. <laughs> Very cute. Got a vintage shop here with a cool looking friend up there. Very nice. Very nice. Probably very expensive. If that's actually someone playing, I, I'm going to be so impressed. Yeah. Oh, it's the clarinet! Uh, of course, it's too high to be the sax. No, I wish I had cash to give him. I gave my one cash away. You gave your one cash away. So, this is your average high street, really. Average English high street at the moment. Just interspersed with pretty buildings, to be honest. Cute little crystal place. Cute little clothes. Cute little jewelry place. Oh look, they've got the leaves. These are peanuts. <laughs> Golden peanuts. Oh, lovely. And an acorn. Nice. That's very sweet. Plants! Happy plants! Oh, they're so happy. That's lovely. So cute. My partner's just gone to this crepe stand to ask for a fork because they've just got coffee cake. Don't really know where to go now, to be honest. Just high streety sort of stuff. There's a beautiful tree though, wow. Hey, look at this. I mean, this is just absolutely radiant. Not really, no, I can't zoom out. <gasps> Can you imagine living in this? thing. Oh, it's a library. <laughs> and a museum. Beautiful though. Okay, we're gonna go visit the cathedral now. So here we are, inside the cathedral gift shop. That's my mum. That's... What's your name again? I'm so sorry. Fernando. Fernando. <laughs> this is Claire. He's just got us in for free. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so happy. I've never been inside. This is the gift shop. 
I might come back here and get some cathedral themed items to decorate my life with. How sweet! Oh, you, it's just your standard gift shop really, but it's quite lovely. Look at this gorgeous tapestry. Looks a little bit like you, Mama. Did you know, um, Alora used to say that I look a bit, my face is a bit, is a particular style of painting. The, yeah. This type of woman. <gasps> oh my God, I'd wear that. That big chunky gold one. Yes. So unfortunately, the cathedral has scaffolding at the moment, as you can see, but I mean, wow, it doesn't take away from the beauty, does it? If I cut it like that, that's, uh, <laughs> I can pretend it's not even that. Bit, bit, um, play doughy, aren't they? So this is the seat of the Anglican church. These are all the flowers for the Queenie, but I'm pretending they're for my birthday. <gasps> oh. My. God. I'm in awe. Oh my god. This is just magical. <gasps> oh my god. So that's one of the oldest windows in the world, really. That, that one. Yeah. And it was small from elsewhere. Is it one elsewhere. of the oldest windows? Yeah, yeah. it is. Those figures, the figures. The, the window, the top section is 15th century, mm -hmm. but yeah, those figures at the bottom, they're like from the 12th century. They're really famous. So yeah. stained glass started in the 12th century? Yeah, 12th century, yeah, yeah. Love this floating font. Right, that is just so cool. I wish I could stand in between these and just be sandwiched inside. I wonder what all these people in suits are doing up here. Bro, I wish you could take photos of me in this thingy. Can you not? I don't think so. I doubt it. Stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Oh my god. People are getting blessed, look by a guy in a lanyard. Boop. He's just chilling, isn't he? Having a gay old time. Go on then. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't explain. I just cannot explain. I feel like I'm in Dark Souls right now. He's giving me photo advice. Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. I just, I just looked up. I just looked up. It just goes on forever, you guys. This is my favourite bird. So it's, it's your favourite? The, the colours faded here. Yeah, I'll explain why this is. This is a photograph. It's not a window. The window is in the... We put it in the workshop. That's we hilarious. I know. 
So it's like a notice. People don't notice. So this is a sticker. Well, if you read that, it's a sticker. Yeah, so it's plastic. The organ has started. So here is my family. I am leaving them to go and look at charity shops in the rain. I'm loving it, loving the rain. It was so beautiful and sunny before. Um, and now it's a bit like, oh, okay. I should have taken my umbrella, really. But I don't mind a bit of rain, honestly. Oh, <laughs> it's pouring down now. <laughs> but it's good, it's fun. We came out of the cathedral and uh, everyone wanted a little tea. Oh, look at that. There it is. Amazing. Everyone wanted tea and I just wanted to go shopping. And because it's my birthday, I decided to just go for it. So I'm looking for the charity shops. I've been told there are a few up here. Oh, the Pilgrim's Hospice. I'm going in. This one is so cute and vintagey. God, I love charity shops. It's a cute little church. Wow! Look at these babies in this glass. Oh, I can see me. That was cool with the light. Hello! So, not five minutes later and it's sunny again. Hello, British weather. So, we have come back through the town, out of the cathedral. It's been a stunning day. We've had rain, we've had sun, we've had amazing architecture. And now we are going to my grandmother's. It's going to be a really beautiful, fun time. Um, I wanted to show you this little area. That was the way to town. This is just some really sweet little houses with a stream and look at these, these, these algaes. What would you call them? Pond, pond reeds? I'm not sure. But these beautiful plants that just give me Studio Ghibli vibes. It was amazing when we were coming in because the sun was shining and the light reflecting off of these guys was just incredible with the movement of the water and everything and 
yeah, it was a really nice little welcome. But as you can see now, it's kind of raining and a bit grey and oh, some ducks! Oh my goodness! Guys, exclusive moment. We've got some utes chilling with some ice cream and some duckies. Oh, they're lovely. Hello! Hi! They're coming to say hello to me. Maybe they eat the greens. Oh my gosh, they're all coming over. Hey guys. I don't have snacks for you. Oh, they're so beautiful though. Okay, okay, okay. My partner's telling me to hurry the hell up. Look at this sweet bridge. Oh, so cute. Oh, did you hear that? I wonder what it was. Okay, we're over the bridge now. Just going through this park to the car park. Some very noisy, noisy motorbikes. But we'll forgive them because they are cooler than cars. Trees, person, car. Yeah, your mum's there. And my mum's there, that's great. Look at those ruins. Canterbury's full of ruins. So that was pretty much my day. I spent the next day with my grandma and my mum. I had a dream about a tattoo parlour and decided the next day that I needed to get a tattoo. So I did. That was my birthday treat to myself. And you can see it pretty clearly because it's on my face. My mum and dad, when he saw, weren't overly thrilled but they were both supportive and lovely and I'm just so, so blessed with amazing, open-minded, accepting parents. Before I went to get it done, my mum was like, please tell me it's not going to be on your face. And I left the apartment telling her, no, no, I don't know, but you know I'm going to get more face tattoos one day, so you know, don't freak out or expect me not to or whatever. And I didn't tell her, but she essentially inspired me to put it on my face that day, so what are you gonna do? It was gonna happen at some point. I'm not gonna really go into detail about what it is, um, I think I'll save that for a tattoo video, which I'm sure a lot of you do want to see. Um, I feel like I look a lot more tattooed than I actually am, I find that it's easier for me to get little pieces because larger areas of my body, bigger pieces of art, I just haven't put the time into designing them yet really, plus money. The main reason why I don't get tattooed in London to be honest. I'd love to go on like a tour of Europe or something one day and just hit up all the amazing tattoo artists that are out there. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, the rest of my weekend. It was still nice, very birthday vibes. So when I came home the next day after I'd got this, after I'd saw my mom and my grandma, it was about half 11 at night, way later than I thought we were gonna get back. But it was also the day of the annual housing cooperative party. So the whole street does a party each year and like hundreds of people come. Residents invite mates that invite mates that invite mates kind of thing. And there's a lot of drinking and music and fun. And I am not much of a party person. Uh, I enjoy socializing, but I think after a while, even if I'm not aware of it in the moment, mentally I can find it very draining. I find that if I'm in a good space myself, it's a lot easier for me to be social, to feel fueled and energized from socializing, uh, but yeah, I used to really not like crowds and hordes of people and, and all that kind of stuff. So I stayed around for a while, um, I ended up walking up the street and standing in between two houses and just watching the world go by. 
um, experiencing the party from almost an outside perspective. Uh, it wasn't intentional. There were kind of overhanging leaves and obviously it was dark and everyone that passed me on the little pavement, which was like hundreds of people by the end of the night, just didn't notice I was there. It was so fun. I had a really interesting experience. I ended up standing there pretty much without moving for about three and a half hours. I didn't think it would go that long. I don't know, maybe I got a bit into how long I could stand there for. About 45 people did see that I was there, but they thought I wasn't real, which was another layer of hilarity. I was wearing my full birthday outfit, dressed head to toe in regal madness, and people just thought I was a statue. I actually got like kind of hit in the chest at one point and this person was like oh my god I'm sorry I didn't realize you were real I got people walking past me then looking being like oh I thought that was a real person for a minute oh god it was just so it was fascinating to be honest I got seven hugs off people I got some people stopping and asking me if I was okay to which I replied yeah yeah I'm just having a great time I had some very interesting conversations to people who would just stop and ask me what I was doing and that kind of developed. And um, my favourite part of that whole night was I was kind of riding off of the high of this beautiful day I'd had and was feeling super connected and super close to light energy and was able to send love to everyone I saw. So everyone that passed, I was sending like divine love their way and it was just like, it was just raising me up, you guys. It was quite magical. A little bit of a strange evening. I wasn't expecting myself to do that, but I did. And it was amazing. I find when I just follow my intuition, that leads me to some really interesting experiences. This past week though, I've been feeling a bit unmotivated I guess um, I think I have a little bit of fear surrounding having all this free time I'm going away on the 28th but when I come back I won't be working for anyone except myself and it's been displayed to me time and time again that I'm not very skilled in time management staying on top of routine and good habits I want to be able to excel in that. It's just about putting in the energy into it, you know? I feel like even though there are aspects of this next stage of my life that I'm going to find challenging, um, if I come at it from a positive perspective, the more work I put into what I really want to be doing, the more abundance will flow my way. I almost find it difficult to balance going with the flow, doing things as I feel called to them, and rigorously planning and squaring out sections of time where I will work on specific things. Like finding a nice meshing of those two work ethics and headspaces is, I think, something that I want to do but also struggle with a little bit at this point in time. But it's okay. I'm going in the direction that I want to be going in. I know that I'm protected, connected, loved, and held by creative forces that want me to succeed. I know that that is an aspect of myself, and ultimately we are working and creating the reality that we want to exist in. Sometimes when I fall into bad habits, I forget that it's usually psychological stuff I don't want to deal with pushed into a material form, and me expressing that negative habit is my subconscious telling me that there's something I'm ignoring within myself. It's been very enjoyable sharing my birthday experiences with you. I can't wait for the next video because it's going to be in the beautiful, amazing, fairy tale countryside. I might even do two videos because I don't know how much vlogging I'm going to be wanting to do, but I feel like it's going to be a lot, maybe. I don't know. 
thank you so much my beautiful beautiful followers i shower you with appreciation and so do the cars apparently that motorbike that's the universe saying yeah thanks guys <laughs> I don't know. Once again, I'll pop my sales details in the description below in case you feel like you want to treat yourself to something cute. Go for it. You're worth it. But remember, happiness can only come from dedication and work on relationships, both with your own behaviours and with other people. Thank you so much again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the clothes, the cathedral, this little necklace that I found in Canterbury actually. I think it was two pounds. I thought it was very very cute and I'll see you in the next video. Lots of love to you all.